The reign of Suleiman al Kanuni started with the conquest of Belgrade in 1521. Suleiman's intention to conquer Belgrade was to use it as Gateway opened to start his invasion to the rest of Europe. The control of Belgrade by Suleiman al Kanuni sooner after, his reigning in 1521, expressed how urgently Belgrade was strategically important to assume the annexation efforts. To the rest of Europe, Suleiman's desire to annex Europe was fueled by the request of the detained France King Francis I. After the crush of the French army by the Habsburgs of Spain and Germany at Pavia in 1525, the French King Francis I was captured and detained. Furthermore, the French king was forced to make territorial concessions to the Habsburgs. Then Francis I wrote a letter to Suleiman requesting to get an alliance with Suleiman, and pleaded him to attack the Habsburgs on 23rd of April. Sultan Suleiman al Kanuni left Constantinople, at the head of massive army accompanied by his most trusted commander Ibrahim Pasha. With about 80,000 thousand forces, this journey took 80 days, during which torrential rains flooded the Danube River, making maintenance of supply lines difficult. Finally, the Ottomans reached Belgrade. Suleiman knew strategically the best place. Hungarians to make a stand was the mouth of the River Drava. This is the junction where the Drava River joins Danube Main River, below the town of Asiyek, and so he diverted some of his army to this place. Indeed, the marching Ottomans could have been challenged at this strategic location if the Hungarians would have protected the area. When Suleiman and his army reach where the Drava River joins the Danube River, Suleiman expected to come face to face with huge Hungarian forces, but was surprised to find that no enemy was there. On August 26, the Ottoman forces reached Mahax and the two armies came face to face. The Hungarians had set up a camp between the River Broza and Mahax proper. This was strategic warfare air that rules out the urgency and necessity to escape. If loss is experienced, as the river Broza lies behind them, this strategic air perhaps costed Hungarians the disaster. The Hungarians stood between parallel lines, the first line being made up of 10,000 infantrymen, divided into two wings, supplemented by divisions of mounted knights. King Louis himself led the second line. The Ottomans had managed to advance themselves into a position well protected by woods and ridges, and set up a camp there. Suleiman ordered his troops in a tiered defense made up of three lines. The first two lines were led by Ibrahim Pasha, and the third line, the Sultan Suleiman, led himself. On August 26, the battle began. The Hungarians were the first to strike in the afternoon at the prayer time. Hungarian artillery fired the central part of the Ottoman's first line. Inflicting heavy damage, then heavy armored Hungarian footmen broke through the first two lines. The Hungarians fought their way to the third line of the Ottomans, where the Sultan was himself commanding. However, this success was unsustainable, as the Hungarians came within range of the Ottoman wagon fortress. A valley of guns and artillery inflicted heavy damage upon the first line of Hungarians. Soon after, the Janissaries formed ranks around their sultan and charged the Hungarian knights, overwhelming them with superior numbers and martial disciplines. The tide had began to turn after two hours of fighting. The Ottoman reserve back at the camp rallied onto the battlefield and joined the Ottoman lines. Meanwhile, the Rumelian cavalry began to regroup with Ibrahim Pasha. At the head, the Ottomans launched a fierce counterback. Pushing the knights back towards their camp, the Hungarians were surrounded and massacred. The battle had ended in great victory for Ottomans and complete disaster for Hungarians.